So on this page, here we are, we're logged into the web portal. I'm logged in as Pam Green. Pam Green is the business owner of the resources we were talking about previously. And now on the side here, you see my responsibilities, file system resources. So if you're not an owner of file system resources, you won't even see this, this text here, but Pam is an owner and you can see right here, Here's some information about a resource that Pam owns, right? Pam owns the sister stuff folder. Um, it has calculation of risk. You can see the user accounts with permissions. If there's any policy violations, so you can set up one identity manager policies to apply to govern data. And we have a few out of the box, things like the ones that are being violated right here. Access not granted on governed data for the predefined group everyone. And no governed data with access assigned to accounts other than 80 security groups. Obviously, we want people using groups and not accoling individuals directly, right? So if you go to the access tab and you know that or you saw that the everyone account was violating, right? But you don't see it here. That's because we, ha we have them hidden right now because they're well-known accounts, but when you click on that, you can actually see everyone has access. And that's the reason why that violation is occurring, right? Access not granted on governed data for the predefined group, everyone. So periodically when those policies are calculated, it'll look at governed data resources that are under control and it'll apply those policies and look for violations. So here we go. So that's why that particular resource is violating, right? So then you get your master details right there, master data, recent activity. So for, we talked about how the agents are collecting activity and they're storing it in the DG activity database for governed data. We also synchronize that data into one identity manager. So you can view that information here. So business owner can see by default for the last seven days, who's been accessing their resource as well as a number of operations. You can see the counts there as well. We talked about access, so you can actually see who is on the access control, but you can also show effective permissions, which allows you to actually drill into the membership of some of those groups, right? So not only do we have the groups, but it's the people within the groups who may have access. So you can actually drill down in there, right? We have some context sensitive reports for a business owner. So here's file system resource access report which will show you everybody who has access directly and indirectly via group expansion, et cetera, as well as showing deviations underneath. And then resource activity, which again, I uh, showed in the manager from this perspective, it's the same report. The only difference is these reports are generated in the web, which means they'll get executed by the job service and then emailed to the primary email for the employee, right? And then attestation, of course, right? Setting up periodic attestations on the security, the ownership, who actually has access, all of that. So you can set up some periodic attestations for governed resources. There's some out of the box attestations that you can enable, but most likely you may want to set up a specific or a targeted attestation for your governed data. So this is the overview of what a business owner sees for all of their resources. And again, they might own multiple resources. You might have a list here, right? So clicking on file system resources, you might get a list. If you own any SharePoint resources, then you would also see those as a separate line item there. So you can own SharePoint, file system resources, and that covers all of our platform support uh, types, including DFS. DFS, if you have AD integrated DFS in your environment, then you can actually publish DFS folders. You can own DFS folders. It's very useful in an environment where you actually use DFS primarily for accessing shares. So if your employees only know about DFS, then in DGE, we actually show only DFS. In this particular case, I have shares only, but if I had DFS, you would see the DFS links, which is great. And then the other aspect of DGE within the business view within the web portal is the ability to request access to resources that have been published. So here I am, I'm logged in as Pam, but I'm going to go to the IT shop and I'm going to actually go to file system access. 
and I'm going to look for a resource that I'm interested in requesting access to. There's a good one, Lenny's Secret Share, right? So I want to actually request access to this share. And then as a requester, I can select either read or write access. I'm only interested in read access. And I'm interested in this share. Give a, give a reason. Check and submit shopping cart. And then that request is going to go to the business owner of that particular share or folder, right? So I'm going to submit the request. And then as the requester, I can check the history of the request. Same thing with anything in one identity manager, it just follows a workflow. In this case, the business owner is going to have to approve or deny the request. And the business owner will actually get a list of groups, right? So they'll actually see which group will best fit that request. So if I logged in as the business owner, I would see that. So again, these are some of the high level features from one identity manager, the data governance edition, we have those IT based functionality, the access reporting, and we have the business view into the data where you can assign policies, you have the IT shop. And then the other thing from the IT shop just really quickly is not only the ability to request access to resources that have been published, but also the ability to request new shares get created. So as an employee, I can go to the IT shop and I can say, Matt's share. I want a new share created to share stuff, right? Now, as an end user, all I care about is the share get created. I don't understand about where machines are necessarily. The request is going to go to my manager. My manager has to approve or deny. The manager isn't going to set anything about machines, but a data governance administrator is then going to be able to create that share or start the process for creating the share because the whole process is going to be done automatically, right? We have process in place for creating that share, a completely customizable process out of the box. Understandably, there's some things that may need to be changed at a specific customer site, but the ability to request shares is there out of the box, which is really cool. And from the web portal, from a data governance perspective, the other thing we have, of course, is data governance reports can be subscribed to. So if you're logged in as a data governance administrator, there's very specific reports here that you can you can access under report subscriptions. And you can see some of the available reports right here. I'm not actually logged in as a data governance administrator. So let's go ahead and log off right there. You can see the only reports available to a business owner. So let's log on as a data governance administrator, who is myself. I, of course, am a data governance administrator. And let's see what we have available for me. It should be a longer list. Here we go. Let's go to my settings, report subscriptions. That's a little bit better. Now I have 21 reports available to me. So just briefly, all of the access reports we talked about, account access, resource access for governed data, data owners versus perceived owners. This will show you a difference between who is currently set versus who DGE thinks the current owner is based on the activity that it's recently been, been collecting, right? Group members, members of active directory groups, member of, things like that. There's a whole series of group membership reporting. Interesting resources without an owner. Basically, this is looking at the activity that's being collected and determining resources that are very busy, very active, and there's no owner assigned. So there's a great report that can help you find resources that maybe should be owned by somebody, right? Local rights, service identities, just another report that's basically return, returning access information against Windows services specifically, right, in this case. So service identities, who are services running as? Are they running as local system or are they running as actual AD accounts, things like that? Empty groups, perceived owners for data governance. So for uh, your data governance, you can actually see who the current perceived owners are, not the, not the business owners but the perceived owners right there. And then resource activity, I already talked about. 
So a whole series of reports here. It's really great. And then unused groups. So groups that are actually out there, they're existing groups, but we haven't found them to be ACLed on any file system or SharePoint resources. So possibly these groups are un uh, unused, assuming you have agents apply to all of your hosts. Again, it's only across the set of servers that we're currently indexing. So, so there you go, a whole bunch of data governance reports available to you to subscribe to in the web. So that's a brief overview there of some of the functionality. The last thing I wanna show from a data governance perspective, I'm gonna go back to my manager machine, is most of the functionality if not all, is available via PowerShell. So we have a PowerShell wrapper around the data governance service that allows you to do things like deploying agents, adding managed hosts, et cetera, et cetera. But you can also govern data. You can set agent properties. There's a whole series of commands available within PowerShell. Of course, all of those are documented. So if you go to the user guide, you can actually see in the appendix, there's a PowerShell um, PowerShell command appendix where you can see the list of the PowerShell commands. Most of them have examples as well if you run a get help. Um, it's very useful if you want to execute PowerShell commands from, say, a process chain within One Identity Manager. So that is a brief overview of data governance, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this talk.